of animals. Even stranger examples of pagan masonry can be found. Professor Gregory Webb of Cambridge University, England, in 1946, Secretary of the Royal Commission on Historical Monuments and an authority on medieval architecture, at the end of the war was appointed by the British government to survey ancient churches in southern England which had been damaged by the German bombing. In one of the churches, he discovered that a Nazi bomb had dislodged the top of the altar, revealing the interior for the first time since the 14th century. Inside the damaged altar, Webb and his team discovered a stone image of a phallus, phallus, the phallus, in fact, of Osiris, which had been carefully concealed within the hollowed interior. At first, Webb, at first, they thought that this discovery was unique until he began to examine other churches. He found that virtually all, virtually all, ladies and gentlemen, of the pre-Reformation churches built before the outbreak of the bubonic plague at the end of the 14th century, when church buildings ceased for a long period, had altars which hid fertility symbols, phalluses, which dedicated the Christian churches to the old pagan religion, the phallus, or the religion of Osiris, which came from the ancient religion of Babylon, where the phallus represented the generative force, Baal, who was also known as Nimrod. See, you always learn something listening to the hour of the time. The public image of protective associations using their powers to promote fair trade and business ethics concealed the fact that the medieval society of Freemasons was a secret society with pagan origins, clandestinely promoting radical political opinions, socialism, the occult initiates, who were the real power behind the secret societies, knew that to achieve their aim they had to use the political system, and in the 12th century they began to put their plan into operation. It is known as the great plan or the great work. It is what is bringing the new world order to fruition into the world. The relationship between the Pope and the Grand Masters of the secret societies, ladies and gentlemen, was an explosive one. The Church regarded the members of the secret societies as spiritual anarchists who were agents of satanic conspiracy against organized religion. The Church saw them as competitors for their flock, the sheep. The Freemasons and Rosicrucians styled themselves as wolves and believed that the sheep belonged to them and were their legal and lawful prey. The Freemasons and Rosicrucians, on the other hand, also accused the church of suppressing the true teachings of Jesus of Nazareth, and many secret societies were fervently anti-clerical. They plotted the overthrow of the Catholic Church because it opposed the old pagan religions and the Manichaean heresy from which these groups drew their spiritual inspiration. Ah, if they only knew that the Catholic Church had already done it long ago, and that's why they feared the secret societies as competitors. At first, secret societies were supported by the Church. When the Vatican perceived the secret societies to be a political and ideological threat to the Church, the climate of suspicion, suspicious tolerance began to change culminating with King Philip of France wiping out the order of the Knights Templar in the 14th century. In the lodges of Freemasonry, in the actual orders of Templars, they attribute the date of the execution of Jacques de Molay by burning at the stake to the year 1313. Other references give the year 1314. The Council of Nicaea, convened by the Roman Emperor Constantine in the 4th century, rejected pagan beliefs, at least that's what they said, such as reincarnation, which were held by early Christians, and presented Jesus as God incarnate, rather than a human spiritual teacher. 
Our contemporary knowledge of the Gospel of Mark dates back to 1958 when an American professor of theology, Dr. Morton Smith, discovered references to it in a letter by Clement, preserved in a desert monastery. According to Smith, the inner teachings of Jesus were passed by him to his disciples during the initiation rite, which resembles those of the pagan mysteries. Smith interprets the ritual communion meal practiced by early Christians as a pagan rite descended from the mysteries of Isis and Osiris. It was this esoteric interpretation of Christianity which was accepted by the medieval secret societies rather than the version offered by the church. After a brief lapse to pagan worship during the reign of Julian, the Christian religion quickly reestablished itself in Rome, and under the emperor Theodosius, 378 to 395 A.D., the worship of the old pagan gods was finally prohibited. The ideological battle between the popes and the Roman emperors they created raged for several hundred years. The point where we can discern the beginning of these secret societies' influence in this power struggle was in the reign of Frederick II, crowned as Holy Roman Emperor in 1215. With his death in 1250, the Holy Roman Empire collapsed. The Scottish Rite of Freemasonry in the First Lodge in Carolina in the United States received its charter from Frederick of Prussia. For 20 years, Europe was devastated by war until, in 1273, the concept of the old empire was revived with the crowning of a new Holy Roman Emperor, Count Rudolf von Habsburg or Habsburg, meaning Castle of Hawks, in Austria. For the next 300 years, under the patronage of the Vatican, the Habsburgs extended their empire throughout Europe, based on their temporal power and the spiritual power of the Roman Catholic. And I'm continuing with the article. The successful alliance between the Habsburgs and the Vatican was seriously weakened by the actions of one man, a crusading reformer, who used the symbol of the Rosen Cross on his personal seal. He was the German monk, Martin Luther. When I revealed that Martin Luther was a member of the Rosy Cross, the Order of the Rosy Cross, and that his personal seal was the Rosen Cross, you should see the piles of letters I got from Protestants who blindly revere this man without knowing anything about him chastising me for revealing to them the truth. But folks, you can write all the letters you want. You will always get the truth on the hour of the time. We may make some mistakes now and then, and if we do, as we always have done in the past, I will come on the air and correct those mistakes. But we never, ever intentionally give you anything that is untrue. Remember that. Martin Luther's personal seal was the rose and the cross, and he was, in fact, a member of the Order of the Rosy Cross. Martin Luther, the man whom many revere, was the founder of the Protestant or Protestant movement. The Reformation, allegedly supported by the Rosicrucians and other secret societies who opposed the Catholic Church, swept through Europe. This period of the Reformation represents a key time in history during which the relationship between the church and the secret societies changed. Changed, folks. With the Reformation, you see, the church was faced with an enemy within, which it could not destroy without bringing down its own edifice. With the Reformation, the whole concept of organized religion in Europe was revolutionized overnight. And where there had been one church, now, today, there are literally tens of thousands, all with different dogma, different interpretations, all professing to be the only true church, with the only truth, and with the only claim to heaven. Ah, but if you only knew. Many think that the secret societies were instrumental in this revolution. I can tell you absolutely for a fact that they were. Support from the Grand Masters was offered to the religious reformers because the Reformation was recognized 
as a means to weaken the influence of the Catholic Church in European affairs.